What is up, everyone? Brandon First, aka First Report, and it is October 6th, 2020. Time to talk Major League Baseball, and more importantly, some playoff baseball. Is the first round, the first ever best two out of three wild card series. They are uh, those series are done. It is time to talk about the more. Um, I guess, conventional series of the National League Division Series or American League Division Series, Um, both of those here. And I cannot do it without my co-host here on the podcast. We just put out a a Twitter vote, and the new name of the podcast is uh, starting fresh here is The Change Up. So uh, we'll be here probably every Tuesday. We'll figure that out. We'll definitely be with you every week, but here on The Change Up. But yes, Brianna Winner is my co-host. How are you doing today, Miss Brianna? I'm good. What I just thought about the changeup is like things can change dramatically when you throw one. So like exactly. You, so, I mean, you never know what you're going to get here. Exactly. And there you go right there. And um, the best part about it, you know, I, I always, you know, when the changeup for me, you know, when I pitched feebly, but they did somehow allow me to pitch and uh, you know, look, when you, when you throw whatever 70 miles an hour, whatever I was barely chucking it up at. And then you have a change up that's 10 miles an hour less. It's, it's uh, it still works. So even then, you know, you're, you're going to get uh, a lot of crazy stuff everywhere else here. We'll change it up on you, but you're still going to get some amazing, amazing content. And speaking of amazing content, make sure you follow us, uh, both of us on Twitter. Uh, it'll be at B winner 12 and at first report myself. And then also go follow at and gambling, uh, a n d g a m b l i n, uh, to follow all of our content um, that we're getting from everywhere, uh, and on that network. Very very excited to be a part of that. Uh, so now that we got that out of the way, it is time to get to the matter at hand. And of course, look, if you're a baseball fan and the calendar is set to October, that can only mean one thing: it's time for playoff baseball it was the first time we've ever gotten a wild card series we've gotten wild card games in terms of single games um but a best two out of three format that uh as a college baseball fan myself obviously very reminiscent of the super regionals a lot of quick hooks a lot of very interesting managerial moves uh some worked a lot didn't and and to be fair look we're playing October baseball. There was a lot of bad baseball, a lot of base running errors. I've, I've never seen so many outs on the bases in four games or four days. Uh, now, of course we had that super day where we had, I think eight baseball games, which was just absolute amazing, but we are going to recap uh, the wild card series and then give you our preview and picks for the division series. And just to, you know, make sure everything's on the up and up, um, you know, we do know there are series going on. We locked our picks in, or at least the series that have already started. So no one got a head start. So don't think any funny business is going on. But we'll start in the American League in terms of the recaps. And we'll start with the New York Yankees and the Cleveland Indians. I thought this was going to be the best series of them all. And I could not have been more wrong. I mean, unless you're a Yankee fan, uh, that was that was pretty painful to see Shane Bieber uh, really just I don't want to call it implode because that's a that's a very good Yankee lineup. Um, but yeah, when you have by far your worst start of the year and it comes in the biggest start um, for someone I expect to win the Cy Young, I, I can't imagine he doesn't win it. Um, the only reason it wouldn't, I'm pretty sure they've already voted. Um, but if people want to put that in, I don't think they're allowed to. Um, he's going to win the Cy Young, but that was a terrible, terrible performance. The Yankees bats have awoken much to the chagrin, I think, of everyone in the American League and baseball in general. Brianna, what were your thoughts on the Yankees? Um, really, I think the most dominant, maybe the Dodgers were a little, but in terms of just firepower, I think the Yankees were the most dominant team in this round. I mean, look, the Yankees have LeMahieu, they've got Stanton, they've got Judge, like they have a powerhouse hitting team. And obviously this season, I don't think they really were all together at one time. One person was out with an injury or whatever it was. So, I mean, when you face the Yankees, you got to expect that they're going to come out with those big bats. Obviously, you really don't want bad pitching outings. I mean, we've seen it where there have been pitchers who have done great one day and really bad the next or their defense just doesn't help them. Um, obviously, like you Darvish, like a few weeks ago, 
they lost two nothing on a two run home run. And that was like the only hit of the game. And like, it just depends on who you're playing and the type of day it is. Obviously it just happened to be the Yankees series, even with Bieber not doing well. I think it could also be attributed to the fact that offense wasn't really working that well and defense just wasn't helping behind them, which yeah. I think it could be said about just about every single series on this list. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I kind of go back to the bad baseball point. I'm not saying that the Indians were a bad baseball team, but I think um, I mean, we saw some bad pitching. We saw some interesting managerial moves. Obviously, the Indians are already kind of a bit behind the eight ball without Cheeto um, this season. But for the Yankees, I think they used they, – they looked at this season, I think the Yankees and the Astros, and we'll obviously get to those cheaters in a bit, but the yeah. Astros and Yankees – new look they they are the second and probably the best teams in their division not for the Astros sake but for the Yankees I think they truly did believe they were the best team in that division no matter what the standing set they knew look we're going to make the playoffs period I know Toronto pushed them a little but they knew they were going to make the playoffs they were able to like you said store one of those guys on the DL all season to the point where we are now ready to get rolling and guess what Guess what teams are probably the healthiest they've been all season? The Yankees and the Astros. They knew that stand uh, the seeds didn't really matter. And they knew that they could get health. If they were healthy in October, they were going to do well. And like I said, look, the Yankees are a powerhouse lineup. You, you, you talk about, everyone talks about, you know, Stanton and judge, but DJ LeMahieu for me might be the best overall hitter in the game today. Um, but look, I love Tatis. I love my trout. Um, but in terms of going up and battling and just n- no easy at bats, DJ LeMay, who gets my money. Um, he is speaking of money. He is going to make a lot of money here in the next month or so, or whenever he hits that free agent market would not be surprised to see him stay in New York. Um, they don't seem to let too many like guys like that go. The Yankees obviously moving on to the division series. We will of course get to them momentarily uh, as they will take on their next opponent. But next up in the American league, it was those dirty, dirty cheaters, the Houston Astros who went to Minnesota and look folks, I'm a Padre fan. Um, I can't sit here and, and, and laugh at another fan base or anything like that. Believe me, Padre fans have had plenty of misery, but we've never gone 19 games without winning a playoff game. Now we've probably never played 19 playoff games. Now that's another story and that's, you can laugh about that, but 19 or maybe I'm sorry. It might only be 18. It's either 18 or 19. Um, I think it's only 18 now that I think about it, but I'm already counting the next one, but this is a franchise that this was the year I, I filled out those brackets. I had the, I had the, the twins winning the American league. I really thought the twins had it last year. What were they missing pitching this year? I felt like their pitching staff might've been the best in baseball outside of Oakland. And it was not terrible against the Astros. It was just the lineup missing Josh Donaldson. I would assume that's what it was. Obviously the lineup did not come uh, to play. It was, it was really tough to see for a second year in a row, the twins just lay an egg in the postseason to a team that I really do think talent wise was inferior. Um, I know the Astros have some talent, but top to bottom, that lineup, that pitching staff, I think you got to give the, the, I think you had to have given the advantage to the twins. Obviously that's what the postseason is all about. And um, the Astros have been here before and they're kind of flexing their muscles and, and flipping a lot of people off, including myself in the process. Uh, what are your thoughts on really a series that outside of like, you know, the, the greater Houston area, really baseball fans did not want to see. Okay. I'm going to just start with Astros here. They almost didn't even make it in. The only reason they made it in was because of the Dodgers destroying the angels along with the Seattle Mariners losing. Cause the angels were hot on their tail toward the end, but they had to finish with the Dodgers. That was the only reason that Houston made it in. Look, I'm going to remind everybody. The angels did sweep the Astros meeting. Astros are not that good this year. I don't know how they are making it this far. Um, I don't want to see them go any farther. Um, but yeah, everybody was rooting for you twins. And what, what happened? We wanted you to win so bad. Yeah. We didn't want to see those cheaters in another, like 
like divisional series like come on it's like, it just i think it just goes to the you you have to wonder at some point like is it is it in these guys heads because i know there's different teams and and i think it was 2001 was the last time this team won a, a playoff game uh maybe 2006 no it was 2006 i take that back but you on santana those days are obviously gone this was a team um you can go back to the 90s the early 90s um and and they they have that of course world series uh really epic pitchers duel over the yankees in the 91 world series but you know since then it's been kind of a small market team that embodies um i think it's little big league um with uh, the movie i think it might have been a little uh before your time brianna but it was about the uh the I think he was like 10 or 11, 12 years old. He's like the, a descendant of, I think the twins owner. And he's, he's a, yeah, he's a big, big baseball fan. They end up giving him the, the managerial job. It kind of felt like that. Like they're just kind of Did, that team. Wait, that didn't just, his grandfather pass away and it yes. got to him anyway? Um, I think, well, no, because I do remember one of the main points of that is him talking to someone of power and him explaining, because they ask him, well, what would you do in this situation? And he breaks it down because I do remember, oh, I'm the home team and this, that, that, that. So he did have to convince somebody. But anyways, that's kind of like the team persona it's taken on. At least that's what I think of when I see the twins. Um, And yeah, look, 18, 18 postseason games lost in a row you got to find a way to get one. I mean, that's like 10 or that's like five sweeps in a row. Uh, it, it's tough to be a twins fan, uh, but we move on to the White Sox and the A's. This was the only American league series to go all three games. Um, the White Sox took game one, Lucas Giolito. My goodness. He is a bona fide ace folks. And if the rest of those kids uh, for the White Sox can get it together, Wow, they're going to be really, really good. I think the White Sox are going to be good no matter what. I I look at game three, the pitching let the White Sox down. It's really easy when I think it was nine walks. Just you you can't do that, period. Uh, To a team with the A's that's probably missing their best player. I know Matt Chapman was struggling before he went down. But that lineup, I mean, when you have Jake Lamb in the three hole, Jake Lamb was released by the Diamondbacks like three weeks ago. I know he's had a nice little resurgent with the A's, but just those things don't really add up to me um, that you can walk those nine guys, make them beat you. You know, if they, hey, if they bust out nine hits on you, tip your cap. But nine walks, you're making it, I think, a little too easy on them. Obviously, it cost the White Sox a chance to go to the division series. The A's instead are moving on. Um, I know that everyone talks about, oh, it's the first postseason win since blah, blah, blah. And look, my Padres are included in that. I don't really like that stat. I don't feel like this was a postseason win. I feel like this was like a qualifier. I know no one really cares about me, but that's just what I think. Um, you know, it, it, two out of three, it, it's not really a postseason series in my mind. But anyways, uh, the White Sox or the, the A's do move on for the White Sox. Like I said, a good young team that, I don't think ex, um, exceeded expectations, to be honest. They probably should have been playing um, the Astros. They should have won their division. They just absolutely, you know, pooped the bed late. Now, maybe did they want to play the A's uh, instead of the Astros? I don't think so. Some people have said that. But what are your thoughts about the only series to go three games in the American League uh, that sees the Athletics moving on? I mean, Athletics were better. We're a better team throughout the season, obviously. But- White Sox kind of went downhill with like two weeks left, I believe. But I mean, look at Giolito had the only no hitter for the White Sox this year. He had the first no hitter in general this year, and he had through a perfect game through six innings in the first game until Tommy La Stella, who should not have been traded from the Angels. I'm going to keep saying that um, and breaking that perfect game. I mean, look, Giolito is the future for them. I think they're just proud that they got to a postseason for the first time in over a decade. Um, so I think that's what they're thinking about right now. Like, Hey, we made it to a postseason first time in like over a decade. Let's just keep this ball rolling into next season. We've got young guys that are coming in. We've got a young ace of a pitcher who can give us a few more years. I think now they were just looking at the future. They were just proud to make it (laughs) this far. Um, obviously if it wasn't a wild card series, they would have made it in no matter what. So I think either way, 
they know that this season is just weird in general. So they're just going to take it how it, how, how it comes and then just progress into next season. Yeah. And they have and a I lot like, to look forward to. Agreed. Agreed. I think they're, I kind of like call them the Padres of the American league in terms of the young talent that's coming up. Um, and that's already there and a lot of Latin flavor on that team. Um, but in terms of, uh, I like you brought up about, you know, kind of just being happy to be there. Obviously, look, they worked their asses off. Uh, they wanted to win, but this is kind of, you know, extra, extra experience for a lot of those young players who have never been in that spot. I don't know if it's as much experience as you want. Um, obviously it's out of their control just because the fact that look, a lot of what the postseason experiences is the atmosphere, the crowd, the stuff like that. Um, didn't get that chance, especially Oakland. Um, look, probably one of the worst stadiums. Just, just laying down the facts, folks. Oldest, worst stadium. It's going to be gone um, in the next couple years. But that fan base, that place uh, in the postseason, absolutely rocks. Uh, it would have been very uh, interesting to see if the White Sox young talent would have maybe uh, reacted a little differently to that but we move on to the rays and the blue jays this was an interesting series i i i thought possibly the blue jays could have had a shot to take the rays down um i just think for the blue jays the moment was maybe a little too big coupled with the fact that you're facing a team that's better than you that the rays are better no doubt about it and you're facing a team that's that's faced or that you've faced 10 times this season. So there's no like unfamiliar or infamiliarity, unfamiliar, whatever, you know, uh, of that, that was there that maybe we saw, you know, maybe with the Cubs and the Marlins, the Padres and the, the Cardinals where you haven't seen them in a year. So you don't really know, not so, not so much in this series. I think the Rays obviously took care of business. Um, really series was never in doubt. Similar though, to the White Sox, I think the Blue Jays, this is, uh, they're going to be there now. They don't have the pitching depth that uh, the White Sox have. And a lot of their young talent is 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 here. There's not a lot coming back uh, behind it, but the young talent they have now is that infield is going to be very, very good. Um, but obviously, like I said, the Tampa Bay Rays ease into the division series with a 2-0 sweep over the Blue Jays. What were your thoughts on this American League uh, wildcard series? I mean, look, Toronto, obviously they weren't playing at their home field all year. Yeah. They have played the Rays like 10 times. So obviously the Rays knew what to look for. And Blue Jays made it in by the skin of their teeth. They were one of the two best of the rest teams. Like, so either way, they were already going to be considered underdogs. Yes, they did well toward the beginning. But once they faced the Yankees, like the third time, it went downhill and I mean, you and I were both thinking that the Blue Jays were going to take that series and it did not happen. So, I mean, the Rays have been a better team all year. And I think that's what it just comes down to. But again, it's a really weird season. It has been. And the Rays are kind of um, the like if 2020 could be personified by like a manager and a team. I think it's the Rays and that's not any disrespect. I don't mean like the negative. I just mean the weird, the weirdness of it. This was the first team that kind of brought the bullpen day um, and made it uh, kind of a staple. Um, really one of the first teams that started over shifting. A lot of it was Joe Madden, but Kevin Cash has picked up the, the banner. And I think that's kind of the allure of the Rays. They're obviously not going to do what the Padres did and, and pay Manny Machado, or they're not going to pay DJ LeMahieu, you know, $25 million a year. They're not going to be the ones to sign DJ LeMahieu, but they are going to be the ones that probably are going to drop two or three rookie of the year candidates in the next five years. That's just what they do. Obviously, um, Brendan McKay is always there. You always think about Wander Franco, who is right around the corner. If you follow uh, Baseball America's prospects, that he's pretty much the top of the list um, swinging the bat. So the Rays move on. We'll get to them in a bit. Moving to the National League side of the wild cards. Uh, we start in Atlanta. And look, there's a, an old saying. I don't even know who said it. It's probably the first person ever. But, you know, they, if you can't score, you can't win. And uh, the Cincinnati Reds feel that. They 
took an extra four innings on game one too, uh, game one as well, and still couldn't score a run. Uh, the Atlanta Braves sweep the Cincinnati Reds, took game one, um, and I think it was 13 innings. Game one, one to nothing, and then took care of business in game two. This is a Braves team that really needed this series win. We all know what happened last year in the division series. Uh, they went in as really kind of favorites to maybe challenge the Dodgers last season uh, and then went into game five of the division series and, and we go to the bottom of the first and they're down, I think, nine, nothing. And it was just completely disheartening for that team. That franchise, one of my best friends, is probably the biggest Braves, I, Braves fan I've ever met, top five in the world, and I probably think he will knife fight you for that. Anyways, uh, it's so I've always kind of kept an eye on the Braves, so it was really nice to see them get the job done. I will say, uh, not I don't know if I'm a fan of Trevor Bauer. I think I'm kind of maybe uh, it's like it's like when you go to the zoo, you just kind of like to to look at the animals. You're not quite sure if you like the sloths, but you enjoy to kind of just watch them from afar. That's kind of how I am with Trevor Bauer. But he pitched his uh, tail off. Um, you got the strut, uh, I think, in the third or fourth inning. He did the tomahawk chop walk, walking off the field. Uh, and then after, uh, him and Acuna got into a little Twitter Twitter beef. Nothing crazy. A lot of, a lot of fun stuff. But that's, that's Trevor Bauer. I'll say this right now. Um, for Bauer, he owned it. After they lost, he, he got on Twitter and said, yep, we lost, blah, blah, blah. I, I expect him to kind of go go into hiding for a bit but that's not Trevor Bauer anyways the Braves move on thanks to really surprising pitching Ian Anderson as well adds on to um, Max Freed's gem in game one the Braves move on thanks to great pitching what are your thoughts on uh, really the shutout series if you want to call it that if you think about the first game I think what I saw was that was the longest playoff game like in a wild card Mm -hmm. I believe Um, like obviously 14 innings Bauer, please come to the Angels. If you really want to play the Astros that many times, please come to the Angels. You have been trolling them all year. I know you want to play them. Just, just, just come to the West. Come to the dark side. <laughs> just, just come a little bit. Um, but obviously, he worked his tail off. He's never going to stop tweeting. He's never going to go into hiding, especially after all of those trash can tweets with the cleats. Um, I do think Atlanta, Atlanta was the best team in the in the National League East. No doubt about it. They were the best team in that division. And I believe that they deserved this series win to go on to the onto the divisional series. So I mean, hats off to Atlanta for carrying out 14 innings and then having to play the next day. <laughs> yeah, and then win too. I mean, it was and and w- throw a rookie out there too. You look at who. You look at what was hopefully started. Now, Cole Hamels, uh, even at the beginning of the year, he was going to be a, a question mark. I think he pitched three innings. Uh, they shut him down again. But losing Mike Soroka, who is the bona fide ace, uh, top five uh, pitcher in the National League in my mind, loses hit, lose him to an Achilles injury that was just devastating to watch. Uh, Mike fulton just lost it, period. Uh, and then just countless other injuries on the pitching staff. Um, I know Felix Hernandez wasn't, you know, maybe expected to be Cy Young uh, form. He opted out before the season started. So they were scrambling. It's going to be interesting, obviously. Uh, like I said, they move on uh, and they will move on to the division series for the second year in a row, but they will hope to uh, have a different result. As I said, now to the uh, West coast and it was Milwaukee taking on the Los Angeles Dodgers. And look, folks, I, I, if there's ever been a more disinterested playoff team uh, than the Milwaukee Brewers, please. Oh, I skipped one. I apologize. Thank you. No, no, we're going to, we're going to hold off on that. I, I jumped too early. I'm, I can't really read. Thank you, Brianna. No, we are going to go with the Miami Marlins and the Chicago Cubs. Obviously this was a series where the Cubs winning the central uh, heading in to face the Marlins, um, I I will go on record as I I am not a fan of when people bring up the Bartman thing. Um, it, it is funny 
until you actually dive into it and realize what happened to that man. Um, it's really sad, but obviously that was brought up a lot. It's the first time these two teams have met in the postseason since. Um, but just wanted to go on record with that saying that, you know, that, that poor guy, I, I feel so bad for that man. Cause I would have done the exact same thing and you would have too. And don't you dare say yourself any different. Um, but this was a series that hopefully the Cubs thought, Hey, we, we have um, maybe a little more talent than the Marlins. We're going to exercise those demons possibly and, and really try and capture probably the last chance for this group of guys to win a World Series. Well, that did not happen. The Marlins rather easily uh, take care of business. You Darvish uh, pitched very, very well. Unfortunately, made one mistake uh, and, it, and it ended up in left field. Uh, and then we saw Sixto Sanchez in game two, folks. For the first time in a very long time, you have to be happy, at least for the Marlins organization. They send away all this talent. At least they finally got a prospect that they actually like back. Uh, they got him from the Phillies in the Real Muto trade. I mean, you talk about all the talent that has been sent away. And really at this moment, I, I could be off base missing somebody, but Sixto, Sixto Sanchez is the only person to show for it. That's ridiculous. But he pitched very well. They move on to uh, face the Braves in another divisional matchup, literally a divisional matchup uh, in the division series. So uh, what were your thoughts on, unfortunately, yeah, your Bray or your Cubbies, uh, uh, an early exit stage left? Yeah, what I think about that is it sucks. David Ross is a first year coach. I think that also kind of contributed to I mean, he's only been in the postseason as a player. He's never been to one as a coach. So I think that also kind of caught up with him. Obviously, you Darvish, I think, should win a Cy Young. I'm just going to say it now. When you're pitching that well in your 30s, like, dude, you earned it. Um, but I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that they were struggling with their hitting early on in the season, and they never quite got it back. And then also just top it, David Ross. Just, I think, just making mistakes as a manager. And it'll happen. I mean, I will say, look, at the beginning of this shortened season, I've, I I said, look, I think rookie managers are going to struggle in whole it, 60 games. I mean, there are a lot of managers who will say it took, it takes me 50 to 60 games to get a feel for my team. Well, guess what? Your feel for the team is now October now. And I think also something that's worked against the Cubs was the fact that their biggest rival or the one team that was going to push them was the Cardinals who were never really there in terms of chasing them because they were chasing games. I mean, we did podcast where it was, Oh, okay. Well, the, the, the Cardinals are in second place, but they've only played nine games. Everyone else has played 20. So, you know, they're in second place at four and five and <laughs> it's hard to kind of, you know, have a divisional race when the other team is just, chasing games let alone an opponent I don't know if that makes sense but I really think they were never pushed because in baseball you see it just with the Marlins the Marlins have won two world series they've never won a divisional title what that means is to win the wild card you got to be playing really good baseball of late that's what has to happen the teams that the team that wins the world series is rarely the best team in the postseason. It's the team that's playing the best at that time now they might kind of go at the same time the Red Sox a couple years back, they were they were just better than everybody, and they were playing good ball. But overall, I mean, the Marlins were not in 2003. The Marlins were not better than that Yankee team. They were just playing better baseball. Period. That's all there is to it. Um, and I think that's what we see going on right now. Cubs really haven't been pushed. They were uh, the the Cardinals were worried about are they going to finish their season, let alone can we catch the Cubs? So, but at the same time, if you think about it, Miami early on was trying to catch up on games too because exactly. they were out for two weeks. That's it's just fair. a matter of the St. Louis Cardinals had double headers literally still going into the final week. Like there was a weekend where they had six games. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a nasty, crazy season as it is. Amen. And speaking of nasty, we move on to uh, the team. Look, I'm, I am going to show a little bit of my bias here. I am not going to refer to the team by name. Instead, I will refer to them as the team up North. Uh, 
And that was for you. Yes. For them. Yes. Or for me, I should say. Uh, and then taking on the Milwaukee Brewers. And like I said, this was the Brewers were a very, very disinterested team. I don't think they really wanted to be there. You got Christian Yelich, and I would say pretty much a majority of guys who probably would be AAA up and down. You know, there's some players on that team, but in general, it was Christian Yelich and Brandon Woodruff and nobody else. And Josh Hader, back that up a little bit. But um, it was it was a pretty easy, easy road for the Dodgers to get through. I don't think there was any surprise um, other than the fact that – I that we saw Kershaw pitch so well in October. I don't know. I really think it was October 1st technically, but I think they messed with his like calendar. I think they made him, uh, they convinced him it was actually September 31st, which I mean, that's a great, that's a great strategy for Clayton Kershaw, but he went out, um, got, uh, I think the most since Sandy Koufax from a lefty uh, strikeouts in a postseason game. Look, they go out, they get the job done. We fully expected that. I don't, think anybody expected the choke to happen this early um it's kind of like asking somebody to choke on cotton candy that's kind of what the brewers were essentially uh not gonna happen we'll get to uh you know some some more choke hazard team hopefully here in a bit but anyways uh the dodgers overall obviously the best the better team uh better lineup better everything they don't they don't need uh, a whole lot i will say one thing that was interesting to me uh game two I think they were up three, nothing or three, one. It was definitely a save situation. And uh, they went to Gratterall who I've been very strong, very, very high on Gratterall ever since the Red Sox pretty much said, no, we don't want him in that big Mookie Betts trade. And somehow they got Gratterall and Betts. But anyways, um, he got got the ball in that situation. Uh, Interesting to see if that's a now controversy is, is Kenley Jansen possibly on the hook now Um, Or is that just, hey, Dave Roberts, you know, we'll throw the kid out there. Jansen was not going to get warm. It was never going to happen that Jansen was pitching in that game. So a little bit interesting there. That was really the only storyline I could find from that series, other than the fact that the team up north is a lot better than the Brewers. What are your thoughts on uh, that series? Team up north for you, team down south for me. Um, (laughs) Because I am in San Fernando Valley. Um, I mean, look. Dodgers, I really don't like saying their name. The Dodgers have been like the best team in baseball all year. There was no doubt that they were like that they weren't going to win against Milwaukee. Like they were always going to win. Whoever the eight seed was, they were always going to yeah, eight seed. They were always going to win. There was no doubt about it. Milwaukee just got a terrible draw. <laughs> like that's what it comes down to, is just Milwaukee knew what they were facing. They knew they were not making it past. They're just looking the next year. <laughs> Like they knew it. They knew they were going to be done in the series, no matter what happened. Now I will say this, and this is, I, if I had a tinfoil hat or if you, you know, you got the like conspiracy music rolling up. Now, if I was in charge or, you know, could kind of be in that Padre dugout or whatever, go back to the last game of the season. If the Padres lose that game, the giants are the eight seed. I don't think it's as cut and dry. That the Dodgers beat, oh, I did it. I don't think it's as cut, cut and dry as the team up north just going and beating the Giants. I really don't. I'm not saying the Giants get it done, but I think it's but, definitely a bigger question than the Brewers. Yeah. Um, and then myself, I'm over here like, man, I guarantee you the, Padre, uh, the Padres would definitely have maybe preferred that. It wouldn't have affected the Padres' seeding or anything like that other than, you know, it's just an extra loss at the end of the season. That never crossed their mind. I understand that. They want to beat the best. That's fine. But, you know, a little conspiracy theory, like, wow, looking ahead, that would have been, might have been kind of kind of smart for the Padres. Once again, I just don't think the Giants would have just easily won it. Uh, but I think they definitely would have given up more, or putting up more yeah. of a fight. And I mean, look, the Giants were the only, really the only team that actually, like, gave, like, comp- competition and contention against them. Like, look at opening weekend. The Giants almost took opening weekend and ended up splitting it after losing the first two games. And then again, the same thing happened. Yes, they lost the series, but they were still taking games away from them. Like, I think the Giants would have had a better chance (laughs) and they should have been there. I agree. I agree. Uh, and now finally, the last uh, wild card series we will recap. I'll let you is, talk about it. <laughs> yeah, one that is very near and dear to my heart. I got to kind of like put a time limit on myself here. It, it, it looked bleak. 
for a game and a half. Uh, game one, Chris Paddock. Folks, I, I, I've been incredibly um, critical of Chris Paddock, even going back to last year. I wish the kid was half as good as he believes he is. That's not a knock. I'm okay with cockiness. I'm okay with ego. That's fine. You're professionals. You kind of have to bring that with you. Now, back it up. And did not happen continually. Big starts for Chris Paddock. He continues to underwhelm. Uh, four runs in that first inning. You thought he went out in the second inning. You think, okay, hey, he might be getting it back together. Two more runs allowed in the sixth or in the third game one, never able to re uh, recover. They lose that seven to four. And then game two, um, a game that put lives or uh, took li uh, took days off of people li people's lives, especially if you're a Padre fan. Uh, down six two, pretty much a carbon copy of game one. Um, a very bit concerning that Zach Davies really did struggle for the first time all season. Uh, I think it's okay. It happens. Um, they got through it. Obviously, the Padres end up winning 11-9. to Will Myers and Fernando Tatis Jr. become the first, actually the only, only the second time in postseason history that two teammates have hit two home runs in the same game. Uh, last time, it was actually to the day, 1932, I don't know, some, some, some people named Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig. I don't know. You got to Google them probably uh, go through name search. Anyways, uh, so the Padres forced the game three and they, after the Padre fans were through and, and, and knowing, hey, we get a game three, the reality for me at least kind of set in that, hold on, we have to do a bullpen game on a, with a already tired bullpen and facing Jack Flaherty? I mean, I didn't, I didn't like our chances. How could you, you know, Craig Stammen starting. I mean, that's just like double down on my misery. Every single one of those pitchers went out there and shut me up uh, in the best way possible. I will say it right now. I was very critical of Craig Stammen. He was fantastic. Every single one of those guys was fantastic. I am fine admitting when I am wrong. Uh, I was, and you know what? My hat also goes off to Jack Flaherty. He's a Southern California kid. Got to give the credit there. And one little side note, Max Freed, Lucas Giolito, and um, uh, Jack Flaherty all on the same high school team. Whew, Harvard Westlake. Yeah, that's why you probably know that name. Uh, anyway, so the Padres move on in really one of the most exciting series. Game two was absolutely exhilarating. Um, San Diego is really on fire. I will admit I'm a fan of the team, not a fan of the fans. A lot of the fans are very fair weathered, but I'll tell you what, there's not a whole lot of room on the bandwagon right now. I'm okay with that. Uh, we'll see what happens uh, in a week or two, but moving on now to the series that we're going to uh, preview and pick. And obviously look, we are now recording this um, coming up on one o'clock Pacific time. Uh, where we are located, you'll probably be getting this a little later. So some of these series are probably going to have at least one or two games into it, but we did lock these picks in and we have our previews already ready. We'll start with the first series two that got started yesterday. Uh, it was the Astros and the A's, a huge division rivalry. It's in the, uh, it's at Dodger Stadium. Obviously the bubble is in effect, at least the small bubble, neutral sites for everyone. The Astros go out, get a huge win yesterday. Uh, before we um, get into that, it, I, I really honestly thought the A's, and I still do, I think the A's are going to get it done. I think their pitching staff eventually is going to um, prove, that, prove to be deeper, that bullpen's better. I don't know if the lineup's better, but I think the pitching the difference is going to be enough. They really, The A's really do need to get those bats working Um earlier in the game. Um, obviously you, you can't go down what they did yesterday. Uh, I, I like the A's to still win this series. Obviously yesterday was a tough one, tough pill for them to swallow. Uh, what are your thoughts on um, really the AL West's premier matchup? Okay. Going back to neutral site. Yes. These two teams have already played at this field. Like and the same thing's going to go for Petco park. Like, Anybody in the West has already played at these fields because everything is in Texas or it's in um, California. And both of those are both uh, 
mostly AL West, but you've got Padres and Dodgers in NL West. These teams have an advantage. Like there's no way around it. Like when these play, teams play against each other at these fields, th- it's going to be like no contest. It's going to be the team that already is used to this field. The other teams haven't played at these fields. So I wouldn't consider it neutral <laughs> at all. I would say but, neutral in terms of uh, fans. No, uh, I know. No, I know. But either way, it's not neutral. Um, <laughs> but obviously I wanted the A's to win. I don't want Houston to go any further. Um now, if only Oakland can do to the Astros what the Angels did to the Astros, and I'm going to keep repeating it because I love it. Um, and I know you love it too. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, come on, Oakland. You're, you're better than this. You're the best team in the AL West. Yes, they were behind you most of the se- most of the season, but you've beaten them more times this season than they've even really beaten most other teams. So Oakland is the better team here. It's really going to come down to the pitching and who can hold them the longest. It's going to be basically like that Atlanta Cincinnati game where they went 14 innings and it was a pitcher's duel until the end. Exactly. And I think if that, if that's the case, I do believe uh, Oakland will become uh will roll victorious. And that is your pick, correct? The A's. Yeah. That, that was my pick yesterday. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Yes. Awesome. And uh, you know, even with that, I, I really, I still won't change my pick now, obviously the dynamic between a two game series or a a best of three compared to a best of five. It's a very big difference. I think you're seeing it with bullpen management. Um, Even yesterday, you know, some of those teams kind of left those relievers out there to die just because, Hey, you know, we're playing five games in five days or possibly five games in five days. Uh, Game one is not as necessary. You want to win them all, but it's not like a three game series where your back is immediately up against the wall. Moving on to the other division series. And once again, all of these series are truly the division series. Thank you to the central divisions, but you are no longer needed. The Yankees and Rays. This is uh, right down the road from me at Petco Park. Uh, It is a little odd. I'm not going to lie to see these two teams playing at Petco Park. Um, And also another thing, these uh, these two teams obviously do not like each other. They've also been uh, hotel uh, in the same hotel in Coronado. Um, Beautiful, beautiful place, but I guarantee you there'll be some awkward uh, elevator rides for some of those guys um, if they run into each other, literally or and figuratively. Anyways, it will be game two, uh, probably by the time this is dropping out, but last night the Yankees continued to do what they do, what they've been doing all season. And um, it was my, uh, Giancarlo Stanton, I almost called him Mike. God, it's been a while since he's been Mike Stanton. Anyways, Giancarlo Stanton hit that uh, grand slam in the top of the ninth last night to really put the game away. And up until uh, about the fifth or sixth inning, it was looking like a home run derby. Uh, A lot of home run, a lot of solo shots, two run shots. Garrett Cole didn't look incredibly sharp. He was sharper than Blake Snell. Uh, Not good news for the Rays. Before the series started, I actually liked the Yankees to pull this one out. Look, the Rays are a great story. I do think they're a good team, but that lineup for the Yankees is really, really tough to deal with. I also really like the bullpen for the Yankees. There's some question marks in that starting rotation after Cole. There's no doubt about that. But when you're average, when you're putting up double digit runs a game, I, I, I the, the pitching staff isn't that big of an issue for me. Um, I like the Yankees in this series, and they took Game One um, right down the road for myself as well. What What are your thoughts on this series, uh, the Yankees and Rays, Brianna? I said the Rays yesterday, and I'm going to keep the Rays. I'm going for the underdog in this series. Um, obviously, yes, the Yankees have a better lineup, but you don't know if they're going to stay healthy throughout the entire series. Like they've been injured so much this year. Obviously, some had COVID, some had actual injuries. I don't think they're going to stay healthy for long, um, especially when they're playing this many games um, within a few days. So I really do think that Tampa Bay will take it. Plus, Tampa Bay was the better of the team throughout the regular season. And I think that should continue on. I really hope I'm not wrong by saying that the Rays are win, but I want the Rays to win. <laughs> oh, and I, I will go on record as well. I, I want the Rays to win. I am not a Yankee fan. I am the exact Neither opposite. Am I. But uh, yeah, I definitely am cheering for the Rays, but you know, just for the sake of this. Uh, and another thing we brought up injuries. I, I actually was just brought to my attention uh, earlier today, about 20, 30 minutes. Um, uh, apparently the, uh, 
the Rays radio broadcast. Um, I don't think it was wishing an injury on, uh, I think it was either Judge or Stanton, but um, the wording of it um, was a bit, you know, unprofessional. That's what I'll say. It was unprofessional. Uh, I don't know if they deserve to be fired like people are, are, are talking about. Um, but look, I, as a, as a sports fan, I never, ever want to see an injury happen. I am a diehard Eagles fan. The year the Eagles won it, I'll admit. The, the, um, we probably got lucky that Aaron Rodgers broke his collarbone, whatever week two or whatever that was, um, or else the Packers might have done it. And I understand that. Now, I wasn't wishing harm on Aaron Rodgers, but you know, we'll take it where it is. I definitely don't want to see anybody get hurt, but uh, that's a great point for uh, that. Brianna brought up is look, are these teams, it's kind of like an old car, like how long can this car go until it just blows up? Um, once again, not, not cheering for that or anything. It's just facts. Uh, moving on to the series that is actually underway as we speak. It's on uh, right over my computer's head over there. Uh, we have currently the Marlins leading four to three. Look, folks, this, this would be a 2020 series. If somehow, some way the Marlins can find themselves in the National League Championship Series, uh, obviously taking on the Braves, a team they finished uh, to second place to in the division of the National League East. What we've seen so far from the Marlins is pretty much what we've seen all, all season. Grind out at bats and, and just enough pitching to get the job done. Um, and they've had really good defense so far. Once again, it's only top of the six with two outs. A lot can change. Um, by then but in terms of the preview for this I like the Braves to get the job done I know the Marlins they've never lost a postseason series and blah 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 you know okay that's fine but the Braves have a better lineup um, I I think the pitching staffs are comparable um, it, I haven't seen a whole lot of the Marlins I'll be honest at least the pitching staff uh, not, a, not a ton of the Marlins, so it's hard for me to gauge that overall. A lot of names, I was looking over the bullpen, and and a lot of names with good numbers, but I just don't recognize these guys. It's kind of what happens, um, you know, the West Coast bias. That's always happens, right? Anyways, um, I do like the Braves, like I said, to win this division. Their, their lineup is better. I think they have the possible MVP in Freddie Freeman. I think they have one of the top young players in baseball in uh, Ronald Acuna Jr., and uh, I know Max Freed struggled a bit today, but it is Houston. It's a very interesting that uh, Houston, that that very small ballpark, it's one of the only um, ballparks that's used here, I guess, in this bubble neutral site thing that's very heavily leans one way or the other. I know Dodger Stadium's kind of a pitcher's ballpark, but not not as much as Houston is a hitter's ballpark. Anyways, what are your thoughts on the uh, the Braves and Marlins? Uh, pretty much the NL East championship. I mean, look, I, I'm agreeing with you. Like, I would pick the Braves over the Marlins any day. Obviously, this is 2020, so you never know. I mean, the Marlins beat the Cubs. I'm just putting out there, no matter how much I hate it, they beat the Cubs. Um, but I do think that the Braves will take it. They've been a better team all year. Yes, the Marlins had to go through struggles in the beginning with the doubleheaders, and I think they've become stronger out of that but I don't think they're strong enough to beat the Braves. So I'm going to take the Braves. And if they lose this game, it's not going to be an issue. There's still a few more to go. I agree. It is. I will say it is concerning because it is your, right. ace, your ace at the time, Max Freed. I mean, obviously Soroka is the ace. He's not there, but I think it would be a bit concerning, but it's not panic time. It's not, you know, me deleting this podcast and, and superimposing my voice in to say the Marlins are going to win. I'm not panicking at that point. Um, and now to really the main event and the series that is probably going to give me an ulcer, um, take some years off my life, uh, the Padres taking on the team up north in my, uh, my case, the team down south in Brianna's case, and probably the team out west in your case. Anyways, the uh, really NL West championship, the two best teams in this division and record wise, the two best teams in the National League. Facts, just look it up. The Padres and Dodgers. Dodgers were six and four against the Padres in this uh, season series. Big news this morning. 
Padres did survive getting um, by the Cardinals with no Lamette and no Mike Clevenger. We talked about the health of the Yankees and Astros. They've been the healthiest they've been all season. It's kind of the opposite for the Padres, at least in the pitching staff. However, some good news, some sunshine, if you will, has broke through here in San Diego because we definitely don't get enough sunshine here. Uh, Mike Clevenger will start game one today, uh, tonight, I should say 6.30 Pacific time, 9.30 for all of the East Coast friends uh, and everything in between, do the math. It's going to be a battle. Clevenger gets the ball to go up against Walker Bueller. Keep your eye on Walker Bueller, not just because of the blisters, but also because what's on his hand. I don't know why. Uh, the reason I thought the Brewers were disinterested and didn't want to be there is because if the telecast, uh, the, the ESPN telecast is talking about a foreign substance on the hand and the other team doesn't tell the umpires or doesn't call it out uh, and bring it to the umpire's attention, one of two things, either one, they don't want to be there, or two, they're doing the same thing and they don't want to call the other team out, which, okay, that might be happening too. But either way, I don't think the Padres are going to give the Dodgers and Walker Bueller, damn it, I did it again. Um, then that team up north, I, will, I don't think they're going to give them benefit of the doubt. Uh, Walker Bueller has been good, but the fact that Mike Clevenger gets the start today is very, very key. Denilson Lamette will not be available for this series. Honestly, it probably means his postseason is done. Uh, very, very interesting to see the number six prospect in the Padres organization, Ryan Weathers, son of former major leaguer Dave Weathers. He was a top prospect or a top um, pick. I think it was sixth overall out of high school about three or four years ago. He's been doing well, but injuries have been a problem. He is on this roster and with, as a left-handed arm, be very interested to see what happens. He's never pitched above Class A. Never pitched above A ball and could possibly make his Major League debut in the postseason. He would end up being the first pitcher to ever do that. Position players have done it. A uh, pitcher has never done it. The way it's looking, what I've been hearing, they might want Ryan Weathers to start a game. I don't quite know how I feel about that, but we will get to that bridge when, or we will cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, we haven't actually told ourselves each other's picks yet. Uh, this is the only one that we kind of kept to ourselves because uh, it hasn't started yet, at least as as of recording. But you know what? I'm going to do it, folks. I'm doing it. I like the Padres in five. Look, I know I'm biased and I know everything above my shoulder. And, you know, I got my Tony Gwynn right here. I got my flag. I'm all decked out in Padre gear. I am as biased as it comes, but... If you've never listened to me talk about the Padres, and there might be a lot of you, this is the first time. I am very negative about the Padres. I am probably one of the more negative fans in Padre fandom to the point where there are a lot of people who don't like me who are Padre fans and people in my family included, and that's okay. But when you watch a team for this long, as long as I have, um, you get negative, no doubt about it. I like this team to do it. This is a different team. Uh, Fernando Tatis Jr., Wow. Uh, Manny Machado getting it done. Clevenger being in this lineup, I think you can start him game one, survive to get to game five. If they win tonight, I think it would be absolutely amazing. Uh, you can save Clevenger, I believe, for uh, game five if hopefully you can get one more win to force it there. You know, if you get it done shorter, that's awesome. But I like the Padres in five. I think their lineup's better. One through four, the Dodgers got it. No doubt about it. Those four guys, better. One through nine, I think the Padres have the better lineup. Uh, the pitching staff for the Dodgers is better. I like our bullpen a little bit more. I like Rosenthal at the end of the game more than I like Kenley Jansen. Kenley Jansen can look downright filthy, but against the Padres, there's something about it. Maybe he thinks that we are his Padre. Who knows? I don't know. But I will can't wait to hopefully take advantage of that. Brianna, are you going to break my heart right now? Okay, well, first, Kenley Jansen... <laughs> has been past his prime for years. He should not be the pitcher he is. He's right had, I, and I, I don't know what, he might have maybe came off, came down a little he bit. He should not be a closer. But he, he had a really good start to the year. Probably the best, like, 40-game sample size he's ever yes. had. But since then. Yes. That, that would have, that should have changed things. Obviously, if he's not doing well toward the end, it's not going to help you in the postseason. 
Like he chokes like nobody's business. Like we've seen it in the last few years when he has, when the Dodgers have played in the postseason. And I can't say team down South because both of them are down South. So I actually have to say the name. (laughs) Um, And I'm sure my family, my Dodger loving family is happy for that. Um, But I mean, I was going to take the Padres no matter what was happening. Um, So I am not breaking your heart. (laughs) Then again, I have given you hope throughout the entirety of this season. So you cannot say I ever break your heart. That is fair. Um, Because I have always said you were going to win unless it was against the Angels. So (laughs) you're right. uh, We were both wrong on that last one. But oh, well, yeah. You were more right. Or more, or I was more wrong. You were less, however you want to look at it. Anyways, uh, we both said a split on that last one. Yeah. But I mean, either way, I'm taking the Padres. Yes, they've got a better lineup. I don't know who's pitching tomorrow. Obviously, whoever is pitching is going against Kershaw at this time. Um, yeah. And Bueller has, obviously, we've seen the articles. We've seen that he, the pictures of him with something on his hand. And I mean, who knows if he's actually going to use it. If he, if it looked like he had already got caught once, is he really going to risk it again? That's going to be the major question. Will he risk it? And will um, obviously the Dodgers be able to fend off Padres with Clevenger pitching? Have the Dodgers even faced Clevenger this no, season? They have not. They they the so if you remember um the second I the debut for Mike Clevenger was against your Angels. Great, great starting pitching performance. Was it Canning or Bundy? I think it was Canning. I think it was Bundy. Okay, but well, either way, they, it was a great pitch. It was one of the two. Yeah, he and Clevenger, that was his Ooh, debut. It may it have been have, Heaney. Sorry? It, it was, may have been Heaney. It was, it was Heaney. Heaney. It was it was Heaney. Anyways, uh, they could have pushed him back. They could have, if they moved him to that next start, I believe we're our, our game was either a Wednesday or a Thursday, but if they would have pushed him to that Thursday or Friday, eventually he would have faced the Dodgers. He did not, unfortunately. Um, face the Dodgers, but who knows? That might actually work out. Maybe this is kind of what they were hoping for to get to this point. Um, I can't, I'm, I would have to maybe imagine at some point, maybe in interleague, he has faced them. Uh, obviously, it can't be a lot. Uh, so that'll be very interesting to see. And because, obviously, sorry. Because if you look at it, all the other teams have already faced these pitchers multiple mm-hmm. times. This is the only series where the pitchers have not, where at least one team has not seen one of the pitchers. Because obviously point. Walker Bueller, Clayton Kershaw have been playing all season. Clevenger started with the Indians. So, and then the whole debacle happened and then he got traded. So this is the first time that they're actually seeing it. So I think that's going to be to your advantage because everybody else has already seen everybody's pitchers. That, and that's usually what the deciding factor is. They don't, they have not faced Clevenger in over a year. If they've ever played, I think they probably have, um, and so I think that's going to be the Padres' advantage just because, um, yes, it's been over a year since they faced Clevenger. They don't know how much – they don't know if he's gotten better or worse since that time. They don't know if he's ever gotten more pitches. Like, obviously, um, I went to college. My sister was a pitcher. I was a catcher. I ended up having a catch for her. She had got, gained one more pitch since I had been gone for a year. So I was not used to that pitch at all. I had never caught that pitch. So obviously it's going to be the same thing between the Padres and the Dodgers, but the Dodgers will not have seen Clevenger at all. If he's got new pitches, if he's gained more speed, if he's lost some speed, that's going to be what the major deciding factor will be is if the Dodgers will be able to hit off the Padres. That's a great point. And uh, you could probably even add one more into that as well. I talked about Ryan Weathers. If he gets in, he's, that's guaranteed. I know for a fact, he's never faced the Dodgers. I I can, I can go confidently on record as saying that, but uh, that's, that's hopefully, you know, that I think if we do see Ryan Weathers start a game, it will be the Padres up two one. Um, Or maybe who knows if they win tonight, maybe they, they throw him in to say, Hey, you know what? Give us a couple innings. If you go out there and kind of lay an egg, at least, the, you know, we already won a game. I don't think we're ever going to see Ryan Weathers um, start a game, a clincher or a, or, I'm sorry, or a, an eliminator or anytime they're down in the series. So, but like I said, that could be another end. Another part is Padres pretty much have a whole new bullpen with Tim Hill, uh, Austin Adams, Trevor Rosenthal. So that's another thing. Great, great, great point to bring up there. I'm really glad that we both 
like the Padres. Um, so that way that, you know, we're, we're both either, you know, very, very happy or miserable. Although yes. I feel like I I'm not breaking your heart. I'm breaking the hearts of my family. Good. Good. That's how I always should loving be. cousins. That's how it always should be. That's how I, we work so well together. I always come first because it's my last name. Damn it. <laughs> uh, and what about mine? <laughs> and of course we have the winner over there. So, you know, we, I swear we, I will show you our birth certificates. It's actually our last names. It just happens to work that way. And um, while we are, you know, having a, you know, nice little fun joke, it, I do want to, um, as we wrap things up, do want to just do a little shout out. Obviously, um, Bob Gibson passed away this past week. It was a little unfortunate. I, it really got swept under the rug for myself. It happened the same day the Padres eliminated the Cardinals. So, you know, it, was, it, it wasn't one of those, it, you know, we are, I was very happy, but at the same time, obviously Bob Gibson, a longtime Cardinal. But uh, for me, there's always, I think, one of the most default or cliche or most asked questions to a baseball fan is if you could go back in time and see someone pitch in their prime, um, who would it be? And me, for I always try to break it up, p- uh, pitcher and batter. Uh, for me, it'd be Babe Ruth. Um, I want to see how a man who throws down a, a, you know, a fifth of whiskey and is smoking a cigarette in the on-deck circle can hit 700 home runs. I just want to see. I want to see how that happened. Um, and then pitching wise for me, it was Bob Gibson. We now live in a world or a baseball world where pretty much everyone throws 95 to hundred. It's great. But we also live in a world where you got Tommy John and you got guys pitching one inning and maybe up until this year, pitching to one batter. That wasn't Bob Gibson. Bob Gibson was going up there throwing, you know, 95 to 98, more than likely nine innings a game uh, and, and doing it very, very well. Very few, I think Nolan Ryan, maybe Randy Johnson, um, but they all kind of fit the Bob Gibson mold of just intimidation, just pure intimidation. I don't think too many pitchers in in the modern era were as intimidating as Bob Gibson. Um, obviously, this this last month has been rough. We lost Tom Seaver, Lou Brock, and now of course Bob Gibson. Um, you know, the field of dreams, as they say, that that lineup's getting very, very deep, unfortunately, uh, but did just want to take a moment to shout out Bob Gibson, someone, like I said, that I've always wanted to be able to hop into Time Machine and and, and go see go see that man throw when he did, and, and, and another part of it is when he did, the time in which he did it, and I, I am going social here in terms of, as an African-American man, in a game that was so slow to embrace the African-Americans um, into their game when really they were probably better than a lot. Uh, and, and to see Bob Gibson and all the all the African-Americans who fought through at that time, but really, you know, a shout out right now to Bob Gibson, who, who I guarantee you went through some things that I know I can't even fathom um, as a white man. So uh, shout out there. He was, I don't think I've ever heard anyone say anything bad about him, except maybe uh, someone who, who flipped a bat on him. I mean, look, he played 16 years in the league, all with the same team. And I mean, that's dedication. If you can play for one team for that long. I mean, he, look, he was a two-time world series champion. He was an MVP. He won two Cy Youngs, nine golden gloves. And he, in 70, he was the N- national league wins leader. And in 60, he was the MLB ERA leader. I mean, that says something about the kind of pitcher that he was. And his win-loss record, 251 of and 174. I mean, he's probably one of the best pitchers that has lived. Okay. Obviously, I'm sure a lot of people can say otherwise. Um, I mean, right now, for me, you Darvish. Um, <laughs> I'm going to come back to it. Like, he's done well in his 30s. Um, but, I mean, it's a major loss. Yes, The Cardinals also lost Lou Brock within the last month. So, I mean, this Cardinals fan base is getting hit hard, especially since the fact that you did kick them out um, and the fact that they were playing double headers through the end of the season, which is not normal. So it has been a rough year for these Cardinals. Yeah, I saw a stat. I think it was 37% of their games were double headers. It was the second most, um, I believe, was the 61 White Sox, which – 
I want to know what the weather report or what the hell was going on in 1961 that forced, I think it was 41% of the White Sox games were double headers. My goodness. And that's 162 games, folks. I don't want to do the math, but we're talking about, I believe, 40, 45 double headers. Anyways, um, a a very, very interesting and informative podcast um, we have for you today. Uh, It was a lot of fun putting it together and a lot of fun. And the first episode of The Change Up here um, with myself and Brianna Winner. Final thoughts uh, as we get ready for a more conventional, I think as baseball fans or at least Major League Baseball fans are more, are used to the best three out of five. Like I said, I'm more, I like college baseball as well. So I'm used to the super regional format, but it was a little odd to see big leaguers rolling with it. Uh, Final thoughts on um, uh, the National League uh, wildcard pod. I mean, to be fair, they are rolling with everything that they're being thrown this year, including ITBs, which I have said for months, I hate. They're done. Some may like it. I've hated it for years. I played with it. Not a fan. Um, and your Padres better freaking win. <laughs> that's all I've got. Your Padres better win. Amen. There is an echo in here because that's how I feel. And look, I'm, while I say they better win, they better. It's going to be very, very difficult. Um the one thing I will say, I've never seen a team, any team, and I could be off base. I, you know, maybe you could bring one or two up, maybe the baby Marlins of 2003, but I've never seen a team look to one player and feed off of him so much. And that one player be 21 years old. I mean, Fernando Tatis Jr. is the lightning rod of that team. And we're not talking about a team that is full of, you know, second and third year players. Eric Hosmer's in that locker room. Manny Machado's in that locker room. Mitch okay. Moreland's in that locker room. You got to remember, Hosmer did hurt his finger. <laughs> well, never in terms of the leadership, I mean, he could be I, hurt, Yeah, but I'm never letting you live that Oh, and, and I don't want to, I mean, the, the bunt and then the, the way he bunted and then bunting on two strikes, it was like, it was like a triple whammy. Like, this is a joke, right? But yeah, that was absolutely ridiculous. And I'm sure he won't even live, let himself live it down. But in terms of the leadership in that locker room, there's plenty of other guys that, you know, maybe they can feed off of, but they're all looking at a 21 year old. And I've said it once, I'll say it a million times to the Padre ownership, um, blank check folks, just give them a blank check. What do you want? 500 million, 600 million. It's not my money. Sure. Give it to them. I'll continue to go to Petco and buy the $14 Sculpins if you sign Fernando Tatis Jr. But I, I will say this right now. I've been a Padre fan my entire life. If the Padres do not do everything in their power to bring him in, I'm done with this team. I'll tell you that right now. It's a, never, ever have the Padres developed a player like this. And I love my boy, Tony. I love my boy, Tony. Um, but Tony was never this exciting. Tony was never um, the complete a uh, ball player that Fernando Tatis is. Tony was a fantastic hitter and a fantastic fielder. And uh, that's fantastic as well. He's loved in this community, uh, but Fernando Tatis Jr. is must see television. I absolutely love it. And um, we'll leave it really with that. The Padres, let's go. Please get the job done. Let's get Choketober or Choctober, whatever you want to call it, uh, started for the Dodgers. Thank you all so much for listening to episode number one of the change up here on and gambling sports. Thank you all again so much for Brianna winner. My name is Brandon first, AKA first report. Now go wash your hands and stop hating everybody. Enjoy the games and go Padres.